Hey guys, welcome back. Today we got an interesting little PC to check out. This one I just uh, actually picked up at a yard sale. The guy had it sitting out there for 10 bucks. And as you see, it's a gateway with a, uh, looks like it's got a, a Radeon uh, APU in it, an A6. Figured for 10 bucks, you know, it's got have at least parts worth 10 bucks in there. Wi-Fi card, hard drive, uh, DDR3, etc. So yeah, just a quick look at the outside. It's a little dirty, but other than that, this thing is in pretty good shape. Or the side panel, well, the back of the side panel. Well. All right, you can see it looks a little crusty in here. Uh, we've got a one terabyte uh, hard drive, uh, two sticks of RAM, and I'm not sure exactly, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what uh, A6 that is. And we've got a uh, FSP power supply, uh, looks like a 300 watt power supply. See, we got a, a pretty interesting combination of uh, ports on here. Uh, we, we have PS2 keyboard and mouse, and below that HDMI, and then VGA. And then uh, we have four USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. Uh, we have our three audio inputs and then this uh, wireless card that's in here. So yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting combination of, of ports on the uh, rear here. It makes noise, so that's a good sign. Let's see if anything happens on the monitor. So it does power on and gets to the gateway splash screen. And it seems to be, well, let's see, reboot and select proper boot device. All right, so it seems to work. Um, just not reading uh, the hard drive by the looks of it. All right, I think it was definitely the hard drive. I've had an SSD hooked up to it now that uh, I pulled out another machine. It's actually, I believe it's uh, Windows 11 is still installed on there, the, uh, the preview ISO, but it does seem to be working. I mean, it's getting devices ready and stuff now. So, uh, after this thing gets installed, um, when it install as it self installs the drivers and, uh, it gets booted up, we'll come back and we'll check it out. All right. So yeah, this is a uh, hard drive that had windows 11 on it. Um, but it is installing everything. I got the drivers installing, uh, the model number on this gateway is a DX 4380. Uh, the CPU is a, uh, a6 5400K dual core APU with uh, built in Radeon HD 7540 graphics. So, uh, nothing great. Uh, we're going to put it to test, anyways, of course, but we'll be able to load some games on there and stuff and test out and see what this thing can actually do on uh, probably some older games. And then maybe we'll throw a GPU in it. All right, everything seemed to clean up really nice. I'm ready to put everything back together here. And uh, we can see that we do have a AMD A6 5400. This is a Trinity APU. It's a dual core. I believe it is 3.8 or 
maybe 3.9 gigahertz. Two cores only, socket FM2, uh, no L3 cache, so not very potent. All right, so I got everything else cleaned up as well. We'll get this back into the case. We'll get a RAM installed and uh, all the other components and uh, should be close to firing it up. All right, power supply is all cleaned up as well. And uh, we're just gonna reinstall this. This is a FSP uh, 300 watt. It is, I believe, yeah, it's 80 plus bronze. Uh, Acer tends to put pretty good power supplies in their shit. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go through and reinstall this in here. All right, we're making some progress here. We've got a uh, SSD attached to the bottom here. Uh, we left this one terabyte hard drive in. I'm gonna see if I can do anything with that. If not, I'll probably just replace that with something else. We've got our cables all tied up out of the way. Um, already put the RAM back in. Interestingly enough, this does support dual channel, but this did not come from the factory with dual channel. There's a four gig and a two gig stick in here. Uh, giving a total of six gigabytes, which is exactly what it says on the back of the system. And uh, they were not put in dual channel configuration, even if they would have been the same. So uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to put these back in the way they were for now. But what I'll probably end up doing is uh, putting another four gig stick in there and get rid of the two to give it eight gigabytes. Uh, and we'll put it in dual channel. And maybe we'll see if there's a difference as well. All right, guys, so she's all cleaned up, and it cleaned up really nice. I got a little bit of lint because I just wiped her down with some cleaner and a paper towel uh, to get the lint off of there. Um, but if you look at the top here, you can see we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick tour. Um, you got power button, um, audio jacks, SD card, two USB 2 ports. Uh, behind here is a DVD multi recorder, and behind here is a swappable drive bay, which is nice to have. And that's it on the front. Everything else is on the back. If we spin it around to the right side, you can see this is the worst side. There's a, a mark on the finish here where it rubbed against something. It's not a scratch or dent or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna put a Daryl Dixon sticker on there, which you know, I think everybody's fans of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead, so we're not gonna fault him too much for that. Uh, you can see the original stickers down here, and uh, up here you can see it tells you the model number. That was a uh, Gateway DX4380G. Uh, original came Windows 8, and we know about the uh, APU that's in there. Um, six gigabytes of DDR3, that's, you know, not dual channel. All right, so as you can see, we're now on Windows 11 with our little APU here. And uh, I thought I might check it out with the memory configuration that the system came with, which is uh, six gigabytes of DDR3, 1600 in single channel mode. And I'm going to do a comparison uh, to an upgrade to a dual channel setup. Considering this is an APU with pretty weak Radeon HD 7450D graphics core, uh, I think it's going to make a noticeable difference. Unfortunately, in BIOS, 512 megabytes is the maximum amount of RAM you can allocate. And I'm not sure if Windows uh, supplements more when needed if you put this into auto or not. Uh, I think 512 may still be the max. For the dual channel configuration, I have uh, 8 gigabytes of DDR3, 1333. So it is a slower speed. However, it does have better timings. And most importantly, it is dual channel. All right, so to compare, I have actual game capture. Uh, the first clip will be the single channel mode and then with dual channel. Uh, keep an eye on the FPS uh, meter at the top left, and uh, I'm going to let this roll, and then we can conclude when it's done.
is he? Did you hear me? Get down here! He's loose! Forget it! Ah, ah! I don't know about you, but I'm killing you. Put your gas mask on. Is that? Oh, I shall say this war. The room is there. This is the Toro Lift performance room. It's really close to the tower. Ready, ready. Sinking. Here they come. Mm -hmm. Seems like nobody's home. Before we hit the surface, put your gas mask on. Without it, it'd be like a goldfish out there. This is the Torelief performance room. It's really close to the bar. Ready, ready. Sinking.
Well, that was pretty interesting. I mean, I did expect better performance from dual channel mode, especially from an APU, but uh, at some points there, it, it was really drastic. Um, other times, like Crisis, uh, an average FPS at any given time wasn't very different, but if you notice the frame time graph, you'll see that it's definitely smoother, and uh, there's a very noticeable difference in input lag as well. I was also really impressed with the performance of the APU, just in general. I mean, I honestly didn't expect anything to be playable, yet it was. Uh, most games are run at a lower resolution and, and very low settings, but the fact that some were still quite playable surprised me. But anyways, I guess the moral of today's story is if you have an APU, make sure your memory is in dual channel mode. Uh, you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one.